Hi, welcome to Base Editing with JC. Today we're going to take a look at some base editing techniques that are a little bit more advanced. These are things I hope that will be able to help you and make things easier and faster and more efficient when you're building your base. So let's look at a couple of things here. I want to start with these two brick walls. Um, I want to stack the brick walls, but I want it to look like one continuous wall of bricks. I don't want the cement strip in between because to me that breaks things up. Your choice might be different, but I just want to show you kind of how to disguise edges that you want to disguise. So first I'm going to set my grid to a quarter and um, my angle snap disabled. I'm going to put that right, right over each other. Usually I'd have to deal with flicker, but this time that's fine. I just want to um, stack them and not exactly even. And I want to move that um, top one so it's just barely over that bottom one. Sometimes the grid gets a little bit off from where it was before. So now they're both in the same exact plane. Uh, so you can see this isn't going to look too good. Um, because it's flickering and so forth. So what I would do is, since it's set to no angle snap whatsoever, I would just take this bottom one and tilt it back just a slight touch, just boop, like that. And so, I mean, it's going to look like it's completely vertical here. But you're not going to get that flicker and you're not going to get base shift because it's, it's angled which is never subject to base shift. Um, another way of course that you can do this is simply raise the top one so that they would be meeting and then uh, make your angle snap bigger, cartwheel that bottom one and then if you're only doing two walls then you've got one continuous wall or you can do the, the slight angle bit with the top when you do the next set but um, this at least limits how many of the cement strips that you have. Okay, in another video on the tour of the Power Girls base on Everlasting there was a house that had what looked like lit pane windows and that actually was a, an array of hanging lamps and I wanted to show you how that was done because uh, lifting each one into place and then positioning it is very time consuming and a pain. So I came up with this method. Basically you just place a floor vertically and since you're going to align things according to the floor it's going to go right through this front surface to the back. Let me show you. Here's my hanging lamp and of course this would be attached to the surface but now I'm going to attach it to the floor. I'm going to turn my grid off because I have this attached to the floor. There it goes. Um, there it is, grid disabled. And I would tilt that into place like so. And I would just keep doing that get the side you want. I mean there's two different sides that are two different sizes so you can choose what size that you want for the size window you want and just keep arranging them and of course this works for anything that you are trying to arrange um, all in the same place on the same kind of plane, kind of vertical plane. You can just set up a floor and attach things to the floor and, and then you know I can move this all over the place. I don't have to hold any keys because it's going to stay right there as far as it knows every place I move it is on a floor because the floor is right behind it. I'm being too particular with this placement. That's just kind of how I am. Okay so then for the I'm not going to make you sit here through this whole uh, whole array so I'm just going to stop with this much and put it on the alphabet because I use alphabet letter I to do my, um, what do you call it, the window frame. So I have this other floor tile that is back here and I have set it to a different depth because the letter I isn't as deep as the lamp. 
So I would attach this on the floor and move it over. And I already tinted it brown. So this would be what you would need to do to make your window frame. And just of course tilt that. And again, you don't have to hold any keys or do anything special to move that into place. And the nice thing about this technique is it's not as prone to base shift. Things don't tend to move forward and back so much. Uh, they maybe move up and down just a little bit, but for the most part, I don't have to do a lot of correction when I come back in after the base has reset. So um, that just seems to be an advantage to using this technique. I use floor tiles a lot. Um, you've seen me do ceilings with the uh, shower floor tiles and I also do walls again if you saw the base tour for the power girls you saw a lot of white walls a couple ways for me to do that or for you to do that um, and this is good anytime you're stacking things vertically so this is the look I want right here where the bottom side of the shower floor is facing out in a smooth aligned surface. So I can do that either by, um, now this is oriented to come out on the floor, so it's going to stay in that, that position like it was laying on the floor, no matter where on this floor I put it. And the nice thing is that it's also gone into the floor here, the floor tile that's standing upright, to its very middle, so that when I grab it, and it keeps wanting to grab the floor. When I grab it and I shift and put it upright, it's exactly kind of melded in with the floor. Its surface is the same as the floor surface. So if I were placing the wall here, I would know, okay, this is exactly where this wall is going to be. Otherwise, sometimes you have to kind of move it back and forth trying to get the right place. And of course, if I put it on a grid, um, that position is going to change just a little bit. I don't know why it just went off my floor that I had put it on, but that's what it did. So on the grid, oh that's why, because the grid actually put it on the other side of the floor. Um, so that's one way that you can set it up, but you do notice I had to um, put it in place every time. Uh, I had to, to twist it or turn it or, you know, rotate it to get it in place. Um, and that's also the case if you wanted to use the actual shower floors themselves as your grid, as your alignment, because it does line up exactly with the piece that's underneath it. Um, if, if, for instance, you've lost, you've removed your floor and stuff, or you just have one more place, or you come back and, you, oh, I need to put another one up there. Well, you can you can do it like this, too. You don't have to have the floor piece there. You can just move it like that. Um, now, if you want to do a whole bunch of floor, uh, of the placement of the walls, and not have to flip each piece, what you can do is you can attach them according to surface and that would be you know again on your grid so it's easy all you have to do is click that F5 get it to attach to surface and it's much faster to go like that but you have to keep in mind if I do it like this this is the way they're going to be facing so obviously I would need to turn around the wall and have and do it from the opposite side of wherever I wanted the wall to face, if that makes sense. So if I put it on this side then, from the other side, that would be the final product. And you can't tell a difference except for how exactly where they are placed as far as, you know, which depth. Um, but you can't tell a difference as to how they're placed. So all these methods work equally well. Some are easier and faster than others, but um, those are some different techniques. Now, you can use the fact that this aligns to whatever um, you're mousing over, 
or you put it on like floors will align with floors automatically but you can also do this with just surface but let's say I have to put this way up here and now I want to move it around up there and I want it to stay lined up with this wall well see I can do that if I have a wall over here I can do that it's going to line up with whatever my mouse is over just like it, it was going over a surface but I'm holding it in place with the control key so it doesn't change over the place. And even if I take my my mouse off that wall, as soon as I move it back, that piece is back. So this is real helpful. I'm not sure if you understand how helpful this is. It took me a while to figure this out. Um, but if you have something in the way, let's say you know you're trying to move something across here, but uh, um, oh that 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 pillar is in the way. Um, or you, you need to place something up above and again it's hard for you to move because some, something is in the way basically is, is what I'm getting at. Uh, you can place your mouse below the item and still maneuver it because of this ability to for it to line up with whatever your, your using your mouse on down below. And same thing for, you know, of course, placing objects um, that are oriented to the floor. Anywhere there's a floor, wherever your mouse is, your object's going to be over that. So that's how you can position that. Okay, um, this is a silo base and it's in Cityscape and it makes a wonderful um, street. Um, some you can either use or not use these lighter areas they could look like traffic patterns or you could get it to be all black but how do you get it to be all black I mean if I drag these two together they'll either flicker or one will be over the other and you still have that light edge so here's what you do um, you're gonna have to set your grid size to uh, zero and your angle snap also to zero and now I'm going to angle this ever so slightly so that the side that is lower is towards the um, piece that I'm going to blend it with so now I'm going to sink this side just a little bit and now I'm going to overlap them and you can see as I move one towards the other they start to merge or it looks like they start to merge and what's happening is the leading edge of the one I'm moving is going underneath the one that is flat and staying still and its edge as the angled side comes closer and closer its edge is able to go underneath the one I'm moving so when you're all done you have this nice dark area in the middle and then you can just get your sidewalk and your where my grass go well put your grass over that too and uh, then you've got your sidewalk and your uh, grass next to the sidewalk I'm talking about the grass so I gotta get some grass put that on with surface so it follows the surface of what you're doing remember this one if it's attached by floor um, it's going to move according to floor if it's attached by surface it's going to go over the top, follow the surface of wherever your mouse is so just kind of keep that in mind of course now it's going over the grass but Anyway, so that would be making a road and with a sidewalk and grass. Some other things I wanted to show you for uh, hiding edges. This is obviously just a, a red rectangle. It's a stall panel wall. And um, I'm going to show you what you can do with this. All right, so again, my angle snap is disabled. I'm going to tilt this slightly backwards. It's not close enough to the wall. Slightly backwards. Oh, 
different edge is, is, go, is disappearing. All right, I, I'll, I'll go with this. That's fine. It must have gotten turned around. All right, so, and now I'm going to angle it, and I get a triangle. And how big this triangle is is going to depend on um, how much of the item I allow sh to show. But the main point is you can manipulate items so that they become different shapes or hide edges. And um, this can really help you make something look different or um, use an item or just use part of an item to make a look that you want to get. So, but uh, you have to just be very careful with the angles and edges and so forth here. And here's another use for slight angles. These are garden walls that are all together. Obviously they are flickering, that would be very annoying. And I've told you to just slightly, slightly angle these walls so that they don't flicker. So here's something that's kind of interesting. When you do this angle, Okay, I'm going to angle it slightly. Now I'm going to angle this one slightly. And now and they're not angled quite the same, I can already see, but I'm going to bring this one out. So, when they're all exactly in the same plane, they're flickering like that you can make very precise geometric patterns because of the light and this only works for indoor lighting. If you look at the base floor you'll see there's darker areas and there's lighter areas because the lighting is not all even. So you use this to your advantage because surfaces that are slightly different angles pick up the light differently. So um, again you can see an example of this in my tour of the Power Girls uh, base that should be coming up soon. Like I said, I use floor tiles a lot and these are very, very helpful when you are um, making lots of different levels. Instead of having to move each item into place and then putting it down and positioning it, you can just grab it and put it on the floor and place it. I mean, it's just much easier than having to do all the rest of the stuff. Of course, it's also easier if you have an angle snap on. And then all you have to do is put it in place. And it's not even that hard if you have the grid on. It's even easier. Um, so you can do, you know, complex things even, like a dome made out of glass, and just th angled things. And this makes sure that uh, all the way around, it's going to be the same exact placement. And with the angle snap editor, you can make sure that each one is placed exactly the same at the same angle and so forth, so you don't have a lot of problems. So those are a few um, more advanced techniques. I hope they were helpful for you, and I hope your base editing is going smoothly. Thanks for listening. Bye.